I was entitled as President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief to immunity. I'm entitled to immunity. Every president has immunity, especially one that did the job I did. I did a great job. And I wasn't working for myself. I was working for the country. I wasn't campaigning. The election was long over. I wasn't campaigning. I was looking for voter fraud, something that I have to do under my mandate. I have to look for voter fraud. Did you catch it? It was subtle, barely half a sentence, but a supremely important point nonetheless. One now at the very heart of Donald Trump's presidential immunity appeal, a decision on which we could get conceivably at any time. That was the disgrace ex-president in a message posted to social media this week, declaring in no uncertain terms that when he pressured Mike Pence, along with a number of state officials, to overturn the results of the 2020 election, quote, the election was long over. In fact, Politico identified six separate occasions just in the past two weeks when Trump made that very claim. The implication being he was acting in his capacity as president in the mission to identify non-existent voter fraud. And so immunity ought to protect him, right? But there is just one problem for Trump. Making the case the 2020 election was long over by that point is made more difficult by the fact he himself wrote in November that year, 2020 is a long way from over. And the idea he wasn't acting in his personal capacity as a candidate for re-election made more difficult by a brief to the Supreme Court in which attorney John Eastman wrote, quote, he seeks to intervene in this matter in his personal capacity as a candidate for re-election. This blatant, whiplash-worthy change in tack is the subject of new analysis in Politico. Quote, contradiction could cause headaches for Trump and his current lawyers as they now press appellate courts to accept an aggressive immunity theory, a gambit that could hinge on whether Trump's attempts to overturn Joe Biden's victory could somehow count as an official presidential act or whether they were nakedly political. Joining our conversation, political national correspondent with a byline on that piece, Betsy Woodruff Swan, plus former lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee, Tim Hafey. Tim, before we even like get into the merits of Trump's new argument. Just explain why the distinction matters, acting as president versus acting as a candidate. Right. So it really matters. The Supreme Court, um, ultimately, or the D.C. Circuit now, and potentially the Supreme Court, has to evaluate whether or not the president, during the acts that are alleged as criminal in the special counsel's case, uh, were conducted pursuant to his official responsibility as president. There's an argument that if they were part of his official duties, he has immunity for those. Even that is unsettled. But the threshold question is, are they were those acts done pursuant to his, his role as president of the United States? Or, as the special counsel asserts, are they done in his capacity as a, a candidate, a private citizen, outside of the zone of his responsibilities as president. So it's understandable that now he wants to say, ah, the election was long over. This was done in my capacity as president. The problem is that that's just 180 degrees different than what he himself repeatedly said on, before, on, and then the day after January 6th. Alicia, I am reminded when I read that of the outtakes from his January 7th speech that the select committee obtained from the archives. They show literally President Trump, at the time, President Trump, when he got to the the draft statement of the election is over, he says, I don't want to say the election is over. And he changes the wording to commit to a transfer of power, but he doesn't say the election is over. So it's it's just not persuasive to suddenly, in a court filing or in a truth social post, say the election was long over, when in real time, he was saying exactly the opposite and acting just the opposite, encouraging people to march on the Capitol to disrupt the joint session. So I don't think it's going to matter. I think it's going to hurt his credibility. I don't think it's going to affect the immunity case. It could only hurt his credibility in front of Judge Chutkin and ultimately a jury when this case is tried. Well, especially, Tim, because you heard him say it in that one clip I played, but he's been making this case more and more frequently. Just listen to what he said earlier this week. And I feel that as a president, you have to have immunity. Very simple. And if you don't, as an example, if uh, this case were lost on immunity and I did nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong, I'm working for the country and I worked on uh, very hard on voter fraud because we have to have free elections. So, Tim, the the part I want to 
sort of tease out of that word salad is, I am working for the country. He's trying to make the case that he was somehow in his duty as president investigating fraud that did not exist. But we showed. He said the opposite at the time. Do you think a federal appeals court then buys this? No, absolutely not. And, and as the argument in the federal appeals court made clear, taken to its logical extension, his position that if he's acting in the country by assassinating a political rival, sending SEAL Team 6 to kill someone, if it's in working, in his view, for the people, it's OK. I mean, that can't be the law. It'll ultimately be for a jury of Washington, D.C. citizens to decide if he intended to disrupt a joint session and if that meets the elements of a criminal statute. He can make that very same argument to a jury and say, I was well-intentioned, I thought this was in the best interest of the country, and then it's up to them to decide. The Court of Appeals is not adjudicating that ultimate fact. They're just adjudicating whether or not he has immunity from even standing trial for what is alleged in the special counsel indictment. I think he likely loses from the tenor of the questions coming from the appeals court, and I'm not sure the Supreme Court takes the case. They may just essentially agree with the Court of Appeals' rejection of the immunity argument by denying cert, in which case it's time for trial. Well, Betsy, to stay on this question about whether or not this will matter more from your reporting, quote, during Tuesday's oral arguments on Trump's immunity claims, all three judges on the panel seem disinclined to adopt Trump's core argument that the charges stem from his official presidential duties. Legal experts noted that Trump's sudden emphasis that he was acting in his official capacity in 2020 may end up being inconsequential or even counterproductive for him. Those actions, they said, would be equally as inappropriate and illicit if they were undertaken as a candidate or a president. So even if Trump, Betsy, can make the argument he was acting as president, still might not save him. Yeah, that's right. This key issue of are you allowed to try to conspire to reverse election results, whether or not you're wearing your president hat when you're doing it, that issue is going to persist regardless of where the judges and ultimately the Supreme Court come down on this immunity question. What's especially interesting as we talk about this uh very nerdy but also pivotal question about presidential immunity is that a different group of judges in the same jurisdiction in the D.C. Circuit has already weighed in on this specific question, and they've taken the position that is against Trump's, which is that in the days, weeks after, after Election Day 2020, he was acting in his personal capacity. There's a litigation against Trump that a group of essentially January 6th victims have brought. They're trying to sue him for inciting the riot. And in that litigation, an appellate panel on the D.C. Circuit sided with those litigants and against Trump. And notably, when they reached that decision, they specifically cited the fact that all the way back, all the way back in late 2020, early 2021, Donald Trump was filing these lawsuits and explicitly saying that he was acting in his personal capacity as a candidate. The very piece of evidence that we wrote about in this piece has already been weighed by a panel of judges and found to be a problem for Trump. 